My name is Pilison Omgongo, a professor in the University of Johannesburg and the NRF Research Chair for Nanotechnology for Water. My research field is in environmental analytical chemistry and nanotechnology. We combine analytical chemistry and environmental chemistry, then we use nanotechnology in those two fields. Nanotechnology is a, is a field that is used to define materials that is a very tiny, small, small size, and you can't see it with the naked eye, but you use special instrument to see that. Um, when we made them in the lab, and these materials, we then use them to our environmental and analytical chemistry. Uh, a material like uh, we talk about, we can make materials from a carbon, we can make materials from uh, sometimes waste like uh, fly edge, but those materials, it, when you, see, you can see the powder, sometimes they are powderish, but the size is what you cannot see. So you can, there are different things that we use to make this material. We can actually use even wood to make these materials. Uh, I come from Flagstaff in one of the villages, and Flagstaff is along the wild coast. Um, I grew up there, uh, did my primary, junior and high school. Uh, that place is very special to me because I think that's where my career started. I am a very curious person and no wonder I'm an analytical chemist because analytical chemist is for the curious. So as I was growing up, um, there were many activities that were happening around me. And trust me, this was a very poor uh, place. No, yeah, if, you, if one can go there, you can see that what I'm talking about. But um, there are several things that made me to actually say, out of this place I am in, I think the only solution for me would be education, such that I really liked school. My mother can attest to this, I never missed a single day at school. No matter how sick I am, I'll go to school. But um, there are lessons that I learned. So for instance, as I was growing up, my father passed away when I was 10 years old, and my mother was not working. So, I am always the person that like to assist, to help. And I could see my mother struggling. And I was 10 years old, so my education at that time cannot help. But what I learned to do was to look for part-time jobs. Then from that stage, I started to learn how to multitask. Because I'll go to school, come back and go and find and work whatever job that I'll be, I'll be doing. Or before I go to school, I'll first go to do my job. One of my jobs was to fetch water for the teachers. And um, from there, I started, I went to high school, but the job still continued because that's what was paying my fees. That's what was paying by, was, uh, was uh, for my uniform. I learned a lot from those experiences now because I think they made who I am. And when I get to high school, I, I, I used, I always liked math. I liked uh, uh, sciences. But when I get to high school, I liked chemistry more. And coming to those places, you will think what you are exposed to is the doctor, the nurse, the police, and the teacher. So one of those careers was my career. Like I wanted to be a doctor because my father believed that I could be a best doctor. So I studied, worked hard to be a doctor only to find out when I get to the university, I remember that in high school I liked chemistry. I did not know much on what I can do as a chemist, but I knew that this is what I will excel in it because I like it. But on the second year of my studies, then that's when I start to understand that actually chemistry is very useful in our community. Everything we touch, everything we do is chemistry, whether it's your food, whether it's your water, whatever, whether it's your clothes, that's chemistry. That's why I started, okay, I'm actually in the right direction. But it also helped me to answer some of the questions that I had when I was growing up. As I said, one of my jobs was to fetch water. I used to wake up at two o'clock and fetch that water. The reason for two o'clock was that during the day, the water was dirty because of the cows and goats and all other livestock. But we'll go at two o'clock because it's clear. But I used to have this question to me. Is it, does it mean this water is really clear just because everything is settled? But I wouldn't answer that question and I do not know how to answer that question. 
until I get to the university. And also the activities that we do around water, but at the end of the day, we will go back to the same source and cake it and drink it, was a question that I always had in mind. But when I get to the university, I realize I can actually use my skill of a chemistry and know what is in that water. If when it's clear, it's clean, or there are other things that are there. And that's where I had an interest of my research. Because my research started from, I wanted to know what is in the water. It, regardless where we get it, I get the water from, but it was inspired by where I come from. Because we never had tap water. We don't have even now. We still go to the same rivers. And the question will be, is that safe for us? Because sometimes when we swim in that water, you will have rash and you ask, what causes the rash? We don't know. And we have no answers. And the doctors might not tell us exactly what is happening in our water. And that's where my career started. Uh, when I was doing masters, I made sure that when I discuss with my supervisor, I'll tell my supervisor that I would like to do a water-related project. In many rural communities, a river is the source of water. So we collect the water, you have to go to the field. So when you get to the field, you don't just collect water. You need to also understand the activities that are happening around that place. Why do you want the activities? Because when you get to the lab and start analyzing, at least you should have an idea of what else to, to look at. For example, if you are in the mining area, you will target metals. If you are in close to the treatment plant, you will target metals and some um, organic things. And then when you go to the farming, you will target pesticides because that's what we use on a daily basis. So depending on where you are collecting water, you will actually map up what you want to look at. So first step, you collect the water, you come to the lab. Then when you come to the lab, because this water cannot just get to, in the, to the machine, you need to do some preparation or we call it extraction, meaning that you want to extract whatever is in the water if it's there. And what takes long in this process is that preparation part, uh, which is what my research is based on. We base on that, how to prepare the water so that we can be able to get the correct, or we call it accurate results from the, what, from the water that we have collected. Okay, uh, my typical day at work, uh, I am a morning person and judging from my how I grew up I like the morning it's when I can open I, I can work best so uh, typically I'm here at half past six to prepare so that when everyone that for me that is a critical step that time alone in the morning even if it's 30 minutes one hour is very important because that's the time I plan what to do and I try to make sure that my day is set and I, I know what I'm expecting to get at the end of the day and uh, in my team, what I have in my team, I have chemists because I train chemists most of the time. But um, when there is a need, we collaborate with other fields like engineering. For instance, if we want to start having uh, some treatment of the water, we will need those skills from the engineering point of view. We also recently started working with people who look at the toxicity because it's of no use of knowing what's in the water and we don't want to assume and say because it's there, it's dangerous to people, no. But we work also with people that can help us to map and say, oh, maybe this is going to be toxic or it's not toxic. Because my, our main aim is to know, is it there? Then now we give it to others, if they can tell us if, if it's there, will it be harmful to um, living organisms? And we are not only concerned about the people, we are also concerned about the aquatic life. Those small animals that are in the water, will they survive if our water has that particular pollutant? Uh, for me, uh, I think initially when I was growing up, I really thought there is a much difference between when somebody who grew up in a city and somebody who grew up in a village. I think as what now, I, I beg to differ because I grew up in a village. And when I get to the university, I realize we are in the same class. 
Yes, I'll struggle with hearing English, but at the end of the day, I will be able to. But what I, I would say to um, those people, or to people, to, and especially in the rural areas, is that commitment is what can take you anywhere, regardless where you come from. If you're committed, you, you can actually do what you want to do. For, for, for example, in my time, we really struggled with knowing many things. Right now, I know in the real areas they have cell phones. They can buy data. They can learn better than we used to. So it's up to them to take the opportunity of what they have and use it for their advantage. You know, and it's also up to them to seek for help because I think what helped me was the teachers. I really asked the teachers because they there's a better knowledge than me of how do I apply to the university? What, what do I need to focus on if I want to go to the university? You know, I think as a, as a person from rural areas, what I enjoy with my work is traveling because it, I've never thought any, like as I growing up, I will ever actually traveled overseas. I've been, a place that I like the most is Portugal because uh, the people are friendly. Uh, I've went to, like different countries and every time I go there I always ask myself is it me because it's not something that I ever see myself doing. Uh, mostly I travel because of work just to share my work and present and uh, I, and I think what, what always is, is, is exciting is to share the stage with the people that are known in the field and for me it makes me to be very proud and very like enjoy what I'm doing and another thing that make uh, me to be happy about my job is when I see my, the students I train when they graduate and you know and as in my in, now when you're training masters and PhD they need to publish and when one of them have a especially the master's student because those are the students you, you you really put a lot of um, energy training and when they can now start doing things on their own, you re it's really exciting to me as a supervisor. And also to see those that are already out of my way, doing very well in their places, uh, maybe becoming, uh, getting awards uh, or becoming HODs. You know, I actually say, okay, the work I do has an impact because I can actually tell you this is a person and this is, um, the person that I was work, I, I worked with, the, this is the person I mentor, or this is the person I trained. I think first of all, as girls, I, I, I don't know now if it's still the same. When I, we were, when I was still a, a, a learner, you would see that more of the gentlemen are the ones that are doing the science base. And I think we also had that mind, mentality that only gentlemen can do it. But I think uh, the girls, if they, they can look now and check, things that are really changing, and it's up to us to put ourselves out there and be available and take it. And I think we have more opportunity as girls to do it because we can multitask. You know, I've, I've trained students where it will be a student but it's a mother, and they do very well. So there is nothing that can stop us, nothing. Because it's, I, I, it's not gender, it's your brain. Gender has nothing to do with you doing math or science or technology, but it's how we, 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 we channel our mindset. And we change that, anyone can do it.